Well, it finally happened. Well, maybe it happened. We're sort of thinking it could have happened. Rather than ask questions about what or really think too much about it, everybody just wants to know, is this good for stocks? Should I buy Bitcoin? Risk assets, are they going to soar? Now, I'm talking about the Federal Reserve and rate hikes. And the latest Federal Reserve meeting just conducted today, just wrapped up today, another 75 basis, rate, 75 basis point rate hike. Yet Federal Reserve officials left open the possibility that they're rethinking at least the pace of rate hikes going forward. The exact statement or the change in the statement used the language in determining the pace of future increases in the target range. The committee will take into account the cumulative tightening of monetary policy, the lags with which monetary policy affects economic activity and inflation, and economic and financial developments. And again, all anybody wants to know is, is this good for stocks? And if you believe, like you're taught to believe, that the Federal Reserve is an all-powerful central bank, the only institution that matters in every corner of your life, and then therefore believe that it's the, rate, the Fed's rate hikes over the past year that are responsible for the stock market's desperate plight, then yes, the end of the rate hikes, or at least the visible possibility that maybe the pace of rate hikes will slow and therefore the terminal rate won't be as, as high or as bad as people are thinking, it could be good for, for assets. Assuming, of course, any of this is actually true. Now, of course, it was believed, or it wasn't always believed to be the case. This idea of the central bank, the Federal Reserve in particular, as some technocratic ideal is a relatively new modern invention. I wanna go back to February of 1969, the pages of the New York Times, a fellow by the name of Edwin Dale. Now, Edwin Dale was not just some reporter working at the Times on some, some obscure beat. He was a well-known economist by February 1969 who had broke some ground on quite a few deep policy implications, a, a deep, uh, deep academic discoveries, and really bringing to, bringing to the people, or bringing to the front of the front pages of the New York Times some of the discussions taking place in economics. Now, what he said in, fe in February of 1969 was, there are many in-groups in this world, each with its own set of private jokes. In the monetary in-group, which just might have the prosperity of all of us at stake, the biggest yoke in town is the, is the nation's central bank, the Federal Reserve System. Banks are laughing at it. Economists are laughing at it. Businessmen getting loans like crazy are probably laughing at it. Congressmen are not in the in-group. They are just frustrated and puzzled by it. Now, what Edwin Dale was talking about in February 1969, of course, was the burgeoning great inflation. Despite all assurances and promises and measures, the Federal Reserve hadn't been able to, to, to arrest the increase in consumer prices that were, not, were only just beginning to plague the United States. And funny enough, that part that he, businessmen getting loans like crazy, which is kind of the important part here because isn't that the whole purpose behind what we're seeing today? Rate hikes. Nobody ever stops and thinks, how does this actually work? If, does the, Fed, if the Fed is increasing short-term interest rates and thereby presumably increasing the costs of borrowing, why would that stop inflation? What would, what would be the thought process there? Because as Edwin Dale was asking and pointing out in February 1969, these things that the Fed claimed to be doing, claimed that Fed was doing that that they claimed was working, didn't seem to be having much of an impact. In fact, commercial industrial loans, just a subset, of, an important subsegment of the lending environment at the time, or at any time, those were growing at about eight percent year over year in around 1964. Then accelerated to around 14 percent year over year growth by the time Edwin Dale was talking about it in the New York Times. So all the stuff the Fed claimed to be doing to put, in the, to put the brakes on the money supply, the economy, inflation, lending, didn't seem to be working to the point that, as Edwin Dale put it, banks are laughing at the Fed, economists are laughing at the Fed, businessmen getting loans like crazy are probably laughing at the Fed too. And wouldn't you know it, the latest data that came out for commercial industrial loans in September of 2021, around 14% year-over-year growth, despite rate hikes and acceleration in consumer credit. 
So am I saying that we're on the cusp of great inflation 2.0? No, on the contrary. What I'm trying to get, get across is that the Federal Reserve doesn't matter as much as you're told it to, it, that you're led to believe that it does. In fact, the entire point behind the Fed's non-money monetary policy is to keep up this belief. If you think that rate hikes are an effective way to combat consumer price increases, the Fed really believes you'll act on that belief and become the policy itself. Now, how that works out for the stock market, that leads to another, another question entirely. And we'll get to all that after the intro here. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm Jeff. This is Eurodollar University. If you want to check out some of the other stuff that I'm working on, you go to eurodollar.university, the homepage for all this monetary, macroeconomic uh, investigation, discussion, all that type of stuff. I've got memberships available where you can ask questions, get some answers, also exclusive content where we go really deep behind all this stuff that we talk about in the videos here, uh, diagramming how money is actually created and where its, where its problems lie in the global banking system. We've got subscriptions available, um, a daily briefing that I put out that gets, that gets you set on each day's important money and macro developments. We do, I do a deep dive analysis, which goes behind the videos, way down deep into the rabbit holes of the money and macro behind the Eurodollar system. All that's at eurodollar.university. Check us out there. So, the Federal Reserve was once a joke. In fact, for most of its history, it was a joke. In fact, it was more than a joke. It was sidelined, of course, after the Great Depression because the Great Depression. The Federal Reserve was instituted a long, long time ago to prevent that very thing from happening. And yet we had this deflationary outbreak that devastated the entire world so much that we ended up with World War II as a consequence. Not much changed in the years since. In the middle 1960s, the Great Inflation develops. Did the Federal Reserve stop it? Of course not. It would go on to ravage the United States and the rest of the global economy for another 17 years. The Fed was an absolute joke. And it's only in the modern invention, this post-Volcker era, which we'll get to in a minute, that this, uh, the idea of an ideal technocratic institution finally took root in what was the great moderation. But nobody ever really explained where the great moderation came from. They just allowed Alan Greenspan and really Ben Bernanke to take credit for it and deduce that it must have been interest rates. It must have been the rejiggering of interest rate policy that led to the great moderation. Therefore, the enlightened central banker can control pretty much everything with the flick of a federal funds target. Which leads us to, of course, today. Today, where the Federal Reserve claims to be halting inflation, bringing the economy under control by how? Now, it's, it seems somewhat intuitive, right? That if the Fed is raising short-term rates, that leads to at least some kind of, of, of increase in long-term rates, it makes borrowing more expensive. But as Edwin Dale was pointing out back in 1969, borrowing was getting more expensive too. And remember, by that time in the late 1960s, borrowing was more expensive than it had been in decades. Because going back to 1929, interest rates went down and stayed down until the 1960s. It had only been in the uh, later, latter half of the 1960s leading up to 1969, the early stage of the great inflation, that borrowing costs started going up. But as Edwin Dale said, businesses are having no trouble getting loans. In fact, they want more. Because let's think about it this way. If you're a business and you're, in, and you're running your business in the nominal economy and there's all sorts of growth opportunities, do you really care all that much what the interest rate on borrowing new funds is? It might add a little bit of incremental cost to your plans, but it certainly isn't going to prevent you from taking advantage of all these nominal opportunities in an inflationary economy. Not, it's certainly not to, the, not to the impact or degree in which we're told and taught today that rate hikes are, the, are, are basically the sole factor businesses will use to consider whether or not they want to do something. It's idiotic. It's ludicrous on its face. But yet, we all believe this because everyone says. Back to Edwin Dale in 69. 
The Federal Reserve, it often seems, hurls thunderbolts and nothing happens. It raises the discount rate and it furiously buys and sells treasury bills. It watches such arcane things as the federal funds rate and net borrowed reserves and the bank credit proxy. It tells the world solemnly that, by golly, it means business and stopping inflation. It doesn't know how, to be sure. As King Lear said, I will have such revenges on you that all the world shall. I will do such things. What they are yet, I know not, but they shall be the terrors of the earth. And here we are, how many decades later, and we actually believe the myth of the terrors. We actually believe that rate hikes are somehow the magic elixir to consumer prices or any economic ill. Despite all of our experience over the last many decades, but including especially the last 15 years, which has proven beyond a shadow of any rational and honest doubt, the Federal Reserve is nothing more than King Lear. They want to command the tides, as Knut once did, but to no effect. It's only if you believe this stuff that it actually has a chance of working, which means it has no chance of working. Now, does that mean that we're, we're facing off into another period like the 1970s, as so many people around the world have said for the last couple of years? Secular inflation, like the late 1960s, that has been thrown around over and over again. And as I said in the, in the opening here, commercial industrial loans, at least, are expanding at a rate that looks consistent with the late 1960s. So are we setting ourselves up for disappointment? Is the Fed pausing at the wrong time, going to let inflation expectations embed themselves even more? No, not at all. In fact, the circumstances in 2022 could not be more different than the 1960s. Apart from the rate hikes, apart from the Fed, the fact is the, everybody knew the Fed was a joke back in the 60s, and everybody today believes the Fed is some kind of competent institution when it is anything but, that rate hikes were not effective in the 1960s, which were proven beyond a doubt by the 1970s. Somehow we're going to believe that rate hikes are responsible for a recession that has been priced into the marketplace since before the rate hikes were ever even considered, especially the aggressive series of them that has happened since mid-year. Eurodollar futures, treasury curve, all of those things inverted way before the Fed became Paul Volcker. And that's another thing. Paul Volcker, where this myth originated, it was a myth. As Emil Kalinowski and I said on a previous episode, I'll put a link around here somewhere. I don't know where it goes on YouTube, but the Volcker myth has, should be exposed for what it is, which was essentially they have no freaking clue what they're doing. They said originally, the Federal Reserve under Volcker, after, a decade after laughing at the Fed was published in the New York Times, nobody was laughing because it was such a tragic situation. And under Volcker, they said, we'll break the black back of inflation by restricting bank reserves. That was the original plan. As Emil and I went over in that video, the, <clears throat> the idea was very simple, excuse me. We'll restrict bank reserves, make them more costly, because bank reserves had a very limited use only for meeting reserve requirements, that would make depository credit and uh, depository money creation more expensive, thereby, theoretically anyway, banks would be a little bit more reluctant to extend credit, which would restrain the economy, lead to the end of inflation. Didn't work like that for the same reason that higher interest rates were not, were not um, dissuading businesses from taking loans. Banks were only too happy to make loans in that nominal environment. Why wouldn't they? So even if the Federal Reserve made bank reserves more expensive, therefore more expensive to meet reserve requirements, banks had a number of options, including just paying the increased cost because the nominal opportunities in the real economy were serious. But otherwise, the, the, the banking system had options to manage their liabilities too so that they can rejigger their funding programs so that they could circumvent those reserve requirements to begin with. So there never was any relationship between bank reserves, the Federal Reserve, the, the Federal Reserve's command of that little tiny corner of the marketplace, that increasingly irrelevant part of the monetary system, and ultimately inflation. So what actually happened? Well, as I said in a member video, uh, laid out exclusively in that video, in an exclusive video, it was the Eurodollar system that eventually broke inflation. But however, 
the Federal Reserve later, much later, took credit for it. Now, back in the 19, early 19, late 1970s, early 1980s, in fact, this was July of 1981, uh, FOMC meeting there, what happened was they knew their bank reserve program was not the reason. It was not working. They knew there was no correlation between their non-money monetary policies and what was going on in the economy, in the banking system, and the monetary system. So they started to think about maybe it was interest rates. And here's a quote from 1981. I think it's more likely that after a protracted period of these high real interest rates, we will see a significant recession both here and abroad. I don't know whether it'll be six months, nine months, or a year, but at some point I think we will see a significant recession. Inflationary expectations will get lowered and interest rates, both nominal and real, will come down. But I don't know if we have any alternative to the policy that we're following. In fact, Mr. Solomon, who was the vice chairman at the, at the time, was wrong. The, the re significant recession, first of all, was not, a, was not the, of development from the high interest rates, and it wasn't six or nine months or a year in the future. It was in progress as they were talking. But as he said, the most important, of that, most important part of that quote was the last part. I don't know if we have any alternative to the policy that we're following. And so very, very later after it became clear the great inflation was over, nobody really knew why, they simply attributed it to interest rates, interest rate movements, when throughout the history of the Federal Reserve, interest rate movements had, had, it's more complicated than whether or not the Fed raises or lowers interest rates. I mean, just ask yourself, in 2022, the Fed is hiking interest rates. So Google is going to have to pay 5% to issue a bond rather than 1%. Does Google really care about that difference? Is that going to dissuade Google from buying five, from borrowing at 5% so that it can buy back its shares? The issue isn't whether the rate that Google is paying. The issue has been that only Google, Google has been able to borrow at low rates and only what Google has been doing with those borrowings or Apple or any of the prime companies that can borrow at rates anyway. The interest rate at which they're borrowing isn't the issue here either high or low. It may be an issue in the stock market, but maybe not in the same way as most people think there too. Again, well, let's, let's look back at commercial industrial loans. What you see when you look at the track of them is how far off they have become, not just in the, the earlier trend from the great inflation, which broke in the early 1990s, but also from the later trend between 1993, the, the end of the SNL crisis, into the 2008 crisis, which Again, the Federal Reserve is supposed to be an all-powerful institution controlling the world with interest rates. Didn't work so well in 2008 either. So if lowering interest rates very quickly did not, did not uh, keep the economy from a crisis, how is raising interest rates as quickly going to have the opposite effect? It's not. The issue is not interest rates. The issue is what this non-money monetary policy has always been about, and that's psychology. So even if commercial and industrial loans are growing at a 14% rate year over year through September of 2022, that doesn't mean anything without looking at the overall context. And part of that overall context is that we see time and again that companies borrow in their CNI loans just before recession. They're looking to get ahead of the recession. In fact, the prime example, throughout the year in 2008, commercial industrial loans surged, but only until October when the monetary system, not rate hikes, rate cuts at that time, it was the monetary system that cut off the borrowing. There never was inflation in 2000, after 2008 because QE didn't matter either. What did matter was the condition of the monetary system. And that's the big difference between now and 1969. Back in 1969, the euro dollar monetary system was still in its infancy and it was still growing by leaps and bounds. In 2022, the euro dollar system is malfunctioning. As you can see in the overall trend for commercial industrial loans, we're in a more disinflationary, deinflationary overall environment 
than anything like the late 1960s. What's common in both is that the Federal Reserve doesn't matter. The Fed is, as Edwin Dale wrote a long time ago, a joke. But, I hear you saying, we're told over and over and over and over again that the Fed is the only thing that matters. The rate hikes are the only thing that matters. And so I implore you, before you think about buying stock, Bitcoin, or whatever risk assets, ask yourself, does a higher interest rate actually do what everybody says it does? Or, are the, or is everybody who points to higher interest rates, are they really just saying, just go along with it? The Fed wants a simple signal to plant in your mind and therefore allow you to follow its objectives to become the policy they can't do themselves because that's what really non-monetary policy is. But today is Fed Day. Jay Powell has taken the spotlight. Everybody wants to, everybody's celebrating the word, the word pivot. Although as I'm recording this, I don't know if he's walked it back in the press conference or not. I personally don't care because it doesn't make a damn bit of difference anyway. But anyway, happy Fed Day, rate hikes, pivot, all that stuff. I'm Jeff, this is Eurodollar University. Until next time, take care. As always, thank you very much for all, thank you very, a huge thank you. Shout out to all of the Eurodollar University members. There's almost 600 of them now. It's, a, it's absolutely incredible. As well as all of our subscribers. Again, check us out at eurodollar.university for what memberships, subscriptions, all that stuff, what you can get there. Um, as I said before, until next time, take care.